Hello everyone, this is Bradley. I've made a title fracture animation earlier, and due to suggestions, I made another icing title review animation, which has been heavily composited with After Effect. In this tutorial, the main purpose is just to tell you how to fracture a wood properly using animation node method. The reason that I didn't use cell fracture add-on, which is native in Blender, is because usually the fracture will fail due to whatever reasons. Either it results in a chunk of mesh, or I miss a piece of character completely. On the other hand, to fully customize the animation, I'm going to use animation node anyway. So let's start. There isn't much of principles that I can discuss with this animation, so let's just create a text. And in the node tree, I'm going to hit the Ctrl A and search for text objects output. And I'm going to select our text, activate the text size extrude. So I'm going to type hello wood. And then it will update the entire mesh. Select the nodes and hit use. Goes to socket settings. I'm going to turn on the bevel depths, the horizontal alignment, and the vertical alignment. So put everything into centers and the bevel depths. So extrude a little bit, bevel depths a little bit. Definitely you can also change the font either with these nodes or just to go through the settings. Does not really matter. And hit can just to rotate that 90 degrees so that we see that. And be aware that you can change the size to make it smaller, or you can move your camera. Does not really matter. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this text into meshes. So usually what you can do is go to object and convert to mesh. But uh, here for the moment I'm going to make it procedurally. So let's take a object mesh data and the mesh objects output. So object goes to object, mesh goes to mesh. I'm going to create a target. So now I have a target being created and it has the same mesh as our text. And by we uh, we can change the hello and it will update the mesh instantaneously. It's uh, the execution of node tree, you can see it's very fast, uh, which is almost a magic. I like it very much. The next thing is I'm going to fracture this hello word. So how can I actually do this? So I'm going to use a node which is called offset polygons. And this is basically all the magics. What it does, just, just uh, to briefly show you, if I'm going to change the Y, you can see what actually happens is uh, I'm changing the mesh, but I'm not changing the transform since the origin state at the uh, word of origin. So this is basically equivalent as if I'm going to hit tab, go to edit mode, and I'm going to move it around, and so on and so forth. This is basically the same thing. So here's the thing, if I input multiple translation into these offset polygons, it will be equivalent like I select these pieces and I move that around, and I select the other pieces and move to another location and so on. So basically break that up. So this is how it works. So let's generate different translations. So I'm going to use uh, the vector wiggle. And I'm going to make it into a list. And the amount of polygons we have will be the amount of vectors we generated. So each polygon will have a different vectors. And that's why I connect the polygon centers to the count. And it will automatically generate a get list. Length. So now everything has been broken up. And let's just do the same thing. Let's use a ruler wiggle. The reason I use a Ulo wiggle is because the rotation contains the degree and uh, makes it a Ulo number. So let's create a list and length to count and so on. There's also other ways like you can use random vector, but as you can see the difference like a uh, wiggle series usually has more precise control compared to the random series. And by using this evolution, you can actually move all these points around and so on. So at some level, it's more advanced compared to the random series, I would say. So, and I'm going to change all the amplitude of rotation to 360 degrees. So that's, it's just kind of getting the idea. And basically this is done. 
by changing these four values, you can break everything. So maybe this is one thing that you would like to do. Um, however, uh, I'm going to use object controller for, and I'm going to explain this. So in my control collection, I have an empty set that to sphere, so that I can see. I'm going to connect uh, this fourth into the fourth, so that only when the origin of these polygons is in the range of the R fourth or the sphere, then they will be exploded. Otherwise, they won't be exploded. So this is a way that you can make kind of gradation of animation. And now everything looks kind of very ugly. So let's just turn the scales to zero, so that as they are exploding, they will also disappear. So kind of cool. Uh, one thing I have to remind you is uh, you can keyframe this controller. You can also do whatever things. But just uh, remember to take this always off while take a either object or collection as a trigger by typing the location scale or the rotation ruler. The reason to do that is so that the movement of this trigger will up the tree while turning off the always will save your computer power and so on and so forth. Anyway, this is basically it. Uh, here are several things I have to say. As you can see, the polygons are definitely very ugly. Uh, it's because the original mesh already have a lot of triangles and guns. It's, it's kind of very ugly mesh. I don't know if Blender has way or will have ways to solve this ugly mesh through procedural methods. Uh, but uh, firstly, this is beyond my scope of fixing. There are tutorials talking about how to fixing these ungons. But uh, I think it's outdated and uh, it's, it's not a procedure anyway. Uh, I'm going to present a method. It's basically just a duplicate the text object convert to mesh. So, you know, this is not a procedure. And I'm going to the uh, I think object the data properties and it goes to the remesh. I'm going to set the voxel size to 0 0.01. Uh, essentially smaller the better. And hit this voxel remesh. So I'm going to remesh this entire whole thing. So now you can see this entire whole thing looks much, much, much better. Um, one thing I have to remind you is it also generates millions of polygons. So if you're going to fracture with offset polygons, it will actually generate millions of vectors, millions of rulers. It basically will take away your computer power. So I'm going to just simply to reduce the meshes procedurally with this decimate modifier. So I'm going to use the unsubdivide. Let's take the two. two. I think the two is good enough. Let's just shade it smooth. It kind of looks nice. We're going to fracture that anyway, so no one will actually care. <laughs> so then, instead of using the text objects, let's cut that off. Let's turn up, uh, turn on the use modifier and select our text mesh. And then let's look at our original target. So now you can see the polygons are looking much more uniform and much more nicer. And you can change these all these kind of things. So this is one way to make it increase the performance. But again, this is not a procedural and I don't know if Blender is going to make more beautiful mesh through these words and so on in the future. Uh, but uh, this is it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I will probably see you next time. Bye bye.